بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا Welcome everybody to the Nothing But Facts live stream. It's Tuesday, which is usually a free day. But what we're doing today is we will start our discussion and our reading on and Nisfi min Shaban, Laylat and Nisfi min Shaban. Is it is it real? Is it a bid'a? Is it fake? Is it fake news? Or is it the truth? And what is the truth about Laylat and Nisfi min Shaban? Is it maybe just uh, let's say a one week hadith, or is it very strong? So here we go. We're going to read from a text that was discovered by the great Sheikh Salih Al Jafari. If you don't know who Salih Al Jafari is, well, let me tell you who he is. He's one of the big awliya of Egypt, who was teaching from the 50s, 60s, and 70s in Jami' al-Azhar. He's from the Malikiyah, and his masjid is literally like you could throw a, probably a baseball from al-Azhar to the area where Sheikh Saleh al-Jafri is. Maybe you have to throw the baseball twice, right? So, But it's just literally like a couple blocks. And anyone who goes there, will know, you'll know that Sheikh Saleh al-Jafri, it's in an area, there's a big sign around that area. Uh, where Sheikh Saleh al-Jafari's masjid is. He was from the Ulama al-Maliki and he discovered a book that was written in the 8th century of the Hijra, Al-Qarn al-Thamin al-Hijri, which means 700s, the 700s of the Hijra by uh, another Maliki of Egypt, Sheikh Salim al-Sanhuri, okay? which I, I'm assuming he's from Egypt. As-Sanhuri, maybe that's from North Africa. But Sheikh Salim As-Sanhuri, let's read, let's look at the biography real quick. Maybe uh, uh, I didn't realize where he's from. He said that he came upon this book from Sheikh Salim As-Sanhuri and uh, he, he edited it. But anyway, it's to remove, okay, all the doubts and all the question marks about Laylat and Nisfi min Shaban. So let's read and let's dive into the hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa Aren't you just sick of hearing about news and gas prices all the time? Just unwind your mind. And how are you going to unwind your mind? With wasted time on Instagram, TikTok, flipping through pictures of, of, of people doing flips and tricks and, and wearing yoga pants, right? Half that stuff is all haram. So dive into the hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa and let's sit here and read uh, these hadith related to Laylat al Nisf min Shaban. So one of the names of it, first of all, what are the names of Laylat al Nisf min Shaban? First of all, it's called al Layl al Mubaraka. Right? Baraka means increase. So the the idea of Baraka means to be to, to be in, in a state of increase. قال أبو العباس ابن عطاء مباركة لمجاورة الملائكة ومقاربتهم. It's it's blessed because of the nearness of the angels. All right, on that night. That's how there are a lot of angels come down to the sky of the earth or come down onto the earth and sit with the believers as they remember Allah uh, and sit with the people who are making dua. And it is narrated from Sayyidina Aisha that she heard the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, Yasihullahu al-khayra fi arba' layalin sahha. That Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala spreads the good in four nights in, in the greatest amount possible. There's something called and maf'ul al-mutlaq in the Arabic language. So when you say, when you take the regular ver the verb and you repeat it as an adverb, so yasihu sahan, right? Yasihu is the verb, sahan would be the adverb. So it's called maf'ul mutlaq Okay, it's he spread it to the most possible degree on that night. وَذَكَرَ مِنْهَا لَيْلَةَ النِّصْفِ مِنْ شَابَنَ And he mentioned in it the night of the 15th night of Shaban, which we said is what this year? March 17th. Thursday night, what we would call Thursday night. Okay. Women Asma'iha Laylat al Kismati wa Taqdiri. And on this night, they also called it the night of the division and the decree. Why is it called that? Because people are given what they ask for. It's one of the nights where dua is answered, and it's also destinies are written on this night. Al Kismati wa Taqdir. Lima Ruya and Ata ibn Yasar. Ata ibn Yasar, of course, you know him. He's from one of the seven uh, Imams of Medina that formed the council of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. إِذَا كَانَتْ لَيْلَةَ النِّصْفِ مِنْ شَعْبَانْ نَسَخَ مَلَكُ الْمَوْتِ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ كُلَّ مَنْ يَمُوتُ مِنْ شَعْبَانْ إِلَى شَعْبَانْ On that night, the angel of death, he finalizes who's going to die that night. Not, not by his decree, by Allah's decree. Now you might say, well, isn't that already finalized in the book of uh, destiny from ages ago? Yes, but as we said, Allah may 
increase or decrease, right? He might, you're, you may have been destined to live uh, until tomorrow, but because of one good deed you did or a dua that someone made for you, okay, your life ha span has been extended. Or it may be the opposite. Sometimes it's better to die than to live. Sometimes there's a fitna waiting for you in 2025, but Allah wants to protect you from it. So he takes you in 2024, right? So it's not always a bad thing to die. Sometimes it's good. That's why the Prophet said, Oh Allah, let me live as long as life is good for me. And let me die as long as death is better for me. Okay. He says, he said, a man will have fights with people. He'll oppress people. He'll get married. He'll start a business. And he'll do all these things, living completely normally, while he doesn't realize that his name has been shifted from the dead, from the living to the dead. Okay from the living to the dead. He doesn't even realize it. And in another, uh, and oh, and he continues. He says, And there is no night after Laylatul Qadr that is better than this night. That's a big statement from Ata ibn Yasar. Where is he getting this from? All the hadiths. He's giving you a summary right now, but the hadiths will all come. And we may do this over multiple times. So we can have a Laylat and Nisfim and Shaban playlist on top of the Another But Facts playlist. He then says, In another narration from him, When it comes that night, the angel of death, he gets a document. He receives a document. Okay. This is your list of the dead for this year and when they're going to die. Exactly when they're going to die. Some people said, how how did Malik and Mot uh, judge it, for example? Is it by a date? Which, well, which calendar date do they use? Sometimes you ask an insignificant question. Does it make a difference? You're going to die either way. Some people said your lifespan is determined by the number of breaths you take because that's something that's universal, right? Whereas whereas dates it's something like arbitrary something that's invented in any event it doesn't make a difference all right and a person will go on in life he will marry he'll start a business okay he'll build a home and he doesn't even realize his name has been written from those who are going to die this year Malakul Maut does not wait. Does not wait until you fit. Like we would think if someone's going to die, all right, well, he just got this job. Let him at least work the job for a year or two. We just got this kid. Let him at least experience this kid for a year or two. That's what we think, right? That's how we would think. It's not how Malakul Maut thinks. Yeah. Okay. عن عثمان بن محمد بن المغيرة ابن الأخفش قال يقطع الآجال من شعبان إلى شعبان تقطع الآجال من شعبان إلى شعبان آجال or lifespans oh thank you very much lifespans how do you know how do you know that dude everyone's saying no audio I don't know if that fixes it though on me or for for me or for Instagram. on Instagram only there's no audio <laughs> every single message there's no audio yeah all this time shoot okay what about now Hey, uh, people, now, is there audio now? Terrible. I don't know how I did that. Oh, but yeah, because it wasn't plugged in, like you said. Zoom it a little bit. Okay, let's test if there's uh, if there's audio. What do they say? Still? You just plugged it in, though. Do we have to restart it? We'll see. All right, no problem. Well, alhamdulillah that we they can go on. Just zoom it in slightly. Yeah. 
We're we're up. Uh, let's test the audio now. Can you all hear? Ever, uh, can everyone hear? Uh, testing. Can everyone hear? All right. Good. All right. So sorry about that. So uh, you're you're gonna have to catch up and watch the um, uh, watch it on YouTube because we talked about we we already mentioned a number of really really interesting hadith and things like this on this subject. Now, picking up where we left off, it's narrated from Uthman ibn Muhammad al-Mughira. Ibn al-Akhfash qala tuqta'u al-ajal min sha'ban ila sha'ban. Your lifespans, they're dictated from one sha'ban to the next. Okay. So that means whoever, the, the update from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on who's going to die, whose life has been extended, whose life has been cut short. Okay. Because we, we know that Umm al-Kitab is with Allah that no one knows it. And that's the final say of everything. And then there's al al mahfuz where things can change. And that's what the angels have access to, and that's what they could read, and that's what it can be altered. And a man may get married, but his name has been shifted to the column of those who will die this year. Okay. Uh, Ibn Abbas narrates this hadith in saying that uh, the aqda, the qada, uh, aqdar, the destiny is sealed. Okay. The qada of Allah. Al-Qada is Allah's will and his plan. Al-Qadr is his execution of that plan. But when you just say one of them, it means that synonymously. The Qada and the Qadr, it's sealed. Any changes are sealed from Nisra Shaban to the next Nisra Shaban. And that on Laylat Al-Qadr, it's given to the angels that have to fulfill it. If you notice, between Laylat Al-Nisra Shaban and Laylat Al-Qadr, only one month. What are we on Aisha? Radiallahu anha qalat. كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يصوم حتى نقول لا يفطر ويفطر حتى نقول لا يصوم وكان اكثر اكثر صيامه في شعبان he used to sometimes the prophet would fast so much in a row that we would say he's never going to stop uh, fasting and sometimes he would not fast so much we say well he's not going to fast again and then he would not fast in any month more than the month of شعبان فقلت يا رسول الله اراك اكثر صيامك في شعبان Oh, Master of Allah, I see most of your siyam is in Shaban. Right? He said, Oh, Aisha, innahu shahru yunsakhu fihi limalak al mauti man yuqbadu wa ana uhibbu an la yunsakha ismi illa wa ana sa'im. On this day, the destiny of who's going to die is finalized and sealed, and a document is given to the angel of death. And I would not want my name to be written except while fasting. And another narration, مَا كَانَ يَصُومُ تَعْنِي النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ فِي شَهْرٍ مِّنْ شُهُورِ بَعْدَ رَمَضَانِ أَكْثَرَ مِنْ صِيَامِهِ فِي شَعْبَانِ He would not fast any month more after Ramadan than in Shaban. وَقَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ إِنَّ الْأَسْمَاءَ تُنْسَخُ فِي الْأَحْيَاءِ إِلَى الْأَمْوَاتِ مِنَ الْأَحْيَاءِ إِلَى الْأَمْوَاتِ وَفِي النَّسَاءِ مِنْ حَدِيثِ أُمَامَ قُلْتُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ لِمَا أَرَكَ تَصُومَ مِنْ شَهْرِ مِنْ شَهْرٍ مِنَ الشُّهُورِ مَا تَصُومُ فِي شَعْبَانِ قَالَ ذَلِكَ شَهْرٌ يَغْفَرُ يَغْفِرُ يَغْفَرُ النَّاسُ عَنْهُ بَيْنَ رَجَبٍ وَرَمَضَانٍ وَهُوَ شَهْرٌ تُرْفَعُ فِيهِ الْأَعْمَالُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَأُحِبُّ أَنْ يُرْفَعَ عَمَلِي وَأَنَا صَائِمٌ. He says that this narration in an Nasa'i says that Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that he was fasting so much. Sayyidah Aisha said, why do you fast so much in the month of Shaban? He said that this is the month in which deeds are finalized and sent up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I want my deed to be sent up while fasting. And previously mentioned that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa a narration from him, he didn't cite the source yet, but he'll cite them later, that names of the living are shifted to the dead, the category of who will die in the month of Shaban. Okay. وَفِي الصَّحِيحَيْنَ عَنْ عَائِشَةَ Now this is, here he gives you a source. 
uh, the two sahihs, which is al-Bukhari and Muslim. Ma ra'aytu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam istakmala siyama shahrin qattu illa Ramadan. The Prophet never fasted a full month. Sayyid Aisha said, I didn't see the Prophet fast a full month except Ramadan. Wa ma ra'aytu fi shahrin akthara min siyam, uh, minhu siyaman fi shaban. And there's no month he fasted more than the month of Shaban. And, the, and in the Nasa'i hadith said, the Prophet Sallallahu said, many people forget about Shaban. Rajab comes, then Ramadan comes, and they forget about Shaban. Well, why is Rajab important? Because it's one of the sacred months. There's no war allowed in it. Women asma'iha laylat takfir One of the nights is the night of absolvement of sins. Takfir, not takfir meaning saying someone's a kafir, but absolving of our sins. Lima ورد عن السبكي في تفسيره من أنها تكفر الذنوب الذنوب سنة. So uh, in his tafsir of السبكي said a whole year's sins can be wiped out in ليلة النصف من شعبان. وليلة الجمعة تكفر الذنوب الأسبوع. The night of Juma, عباد in that night will remove the sins of a week. وليلة القدر تكفر الذنوب العمر. And ليلة القدر will wipe away the sins of a year. Okay. I'm sure you're asking, well, what are the sources? We're going to get to them. He's just giving you an introduction right now. Women Asma'iha, Laylat al Ijaba. And from its names, the night of answered prayers. Lima Ruya, An Ibn Umar, radiallahu anhuma, qala, narrated from Ibn Umar. It is said, five nights, La ya ruddu fihin, La yuraddu fihin ad dua'u. Five nights. See, the, there's no tashkil, so I'm not figuring, I have to figure out. Afterwards, whether it's a passive verb or an active verb, لا يرد فيهن الدعاء. Five nights in which dua is not answered. Pay very close attention. ليلة الجمعة, the night of every Juma. وأول ليلة من رجب, and the first night of رجب. Past, right? وليلة النصف من شعبان, and the night of النصف من شعبان, and then وليلة العيدين, and the two nights before Eid. Okay, so when we say the night of something, we mean the night before it. أخرجه عبد الرزاق في مصنفه والبيهقي من شعب من شعب الإيمان موقوفا. They both narrated it موقوفا. هو الذي لم يرفعه الصحابي إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. It's a موقوف in uh, عبد الرزاق الصنعاني's book and البيهقي's book. But the the موقوف the hadith that's موقوف. موقوف means only a sahabi said it. That, like the prophet's not quoted in it. However, it's مرفوع حكما. But it takes on the ruling of something that the Prophet ﷺ said because a Sahabi is not going to make something up himself. A Sahabi cannot make up something of the ghaib, of the unseen himself. So when whenever a Sahabi speaks, let's say about a fatwa, that's the fatwa of the Sahabi. But when the Sahabi speaks about something of the ghaib, of the unseen, then it takes on the ruling of being the words of the Prophet because a Sahabi is not going to make up something uh, from himself. Okay. خمس ليال لا ترد فيهن دعوة. This is amazing. Five nights, no da'wa, no du'a is ever going to be rejected from it. أول ليلة من رجب, the first night of رجب, meaning when the first moon is sighted, or if it's the previous month was thirty days and it's رجب, that's the first uh, night. وليلة النصف من شعبان, the night of the uh, the nisf of شعبان. ليلة الجمعة, this is why we have a special gathering every Thursday night for the grand du'a. The night of Juma, which is Thursday, we would call it Thursday night, and Laylata Al Eidain, the two nights of Eid. وقال الشافعي رضي الله عنه في الأم. الشافعي says in the book, in his great book, Al Um. What does he say? بلغنا أن الدعاء يستجاب في خمس ليال. It's if it's good. Listen, if it's good enough for Shafi, it's good enough for me. No one cared more about the Sunnah. He was from the those type those. That caliber of scholars in our ummah that is blameless, that can he's nobody could think about him that he was took the sunnah lightly, or that he flirted with innovations, or that he flirted with meaningless things. No, this was one of the people from the top top. If there's like a concept of one percent, he's from the one percent. Okay, of the people who are haris to to hold on to the sunnah and never promulgate anything false. And he said, Balagana, it has reached us that dua is answered in five nights. I mean, how important is this? Don't you need things and you want things? Laylatul Jum'ah, Walaylatul Adha, 
وليله الفطر means the two nights before the two eids and the night before friday واول ليله من رجب and the first night of رجب وليله النصف من شعبان and the late night of the uh, نصف of شعبان if this was something that was just like one week thing you wouldn't have a book on it right you wouldn't have a book with all these narrations in it and it's in kitab al um it's a very important book for shafi women asma'iha laylat al haya and from it is called the night of life lima rawahu ishaq ibn rahawi from the narration of ishaq ibn rahawi who's ishaq ibn rahawi he's the teacher of al bukhari he's imam al bukhari's teacher in persia he's the one who gave him the concept and the idea of writing the sahih an wahb ibn munabbi on the authority of Wahb ibn Munabbih, who said, إِذَا كَانَ لَيْلَةِ النِّسْوِ مِنْ شَعْبَانِ لَمْ يَمُتْ أَحَدٌ بَيْنَ الْمَغْرِبِ وَالْعِشَاءِ لِاشْتِغَالِ مَلَكِ الْمَوْتِ He says when it is the late night of Nisf of Sha'ban, he says, usually you do not see people die between Maghrib and Isha because of the busyness of the angel of death. Okay, well, what is he busy with? بِقَبْدِ السِّكَاكِ مِنْ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ From receiving the document from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on who will live and who will die in the next coming year. Women asma'iha. Again, remember, we're only on the names right now. Women asma'iha laylat Eid al-malaika. From the names of this night and anything that has a lot of names, it's a sign of its its worthiness. Eid al-malaika. The Eid of the angels. لِمَا ذَكَرَهُ أَبُوْ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ الطَّاهِرِ بْنُ مُحَمْدِ بْنُ أَحْمَدِ الْحَدَّادِ فِي كِتَابِهِ عِنْوَانِ الْمَجَالِسِ فِي مَا قِيلَ إِنَّ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ فِي السَّمَاءِ لَيْلَتَيْ عِيد Just as you two, you Muslims have two nights of Eid, we have two nights of Eid. فَعِيدَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ لَيْلَةِ الْبَرَاءَةِ يعني ليلة النسف من شعبان and the, the, ليلة النسف من شعبان and the second one is ليلة القدر. These are the two Eids of the angels. وعيد المؤمنين يوم الفطر يوم الأضحى and the Eid of the believers is الفطر والأضحى ومن أسمائها ليلة الشفاعة and from its names is the night of intercession لما روي عن عائشة رضي الله عنها أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عن narration from سيد عائشة كان جالسا في تلك الليلة فنزل عليه جبريل he was sitting that night سيد جبريل came down he said إن الله تبارك وتعالى قد أعتق من النار نصف أمتك Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has freed from the hellfire half of your ummah. I was happened on that night. Women asma'iha laylat al-bara'a. Shabi barat in Urdu. And this is one of its most famous name is the night of al-bara'a. Wa laylat al-baraka, the night of baraka. Wa laylat al-ta'zim and the great night. Wa laylat al-qadr. Wa laylat al-ghufran, the night of forgiveness. Laylat al-qadr meaning the ordain, ordainment of the of, of destinies. Wa laylat al-itqi min al-nar, and the night of freeing from the hellfire. Now he talks about the the the, the virtues. What is the benefit of this night? All right, what am I going to get out of it? Ruwiya, or Rawa, al-Imam Ahmad, fi musnadihi, mursalan. Imam Ahmad narrates this hadith. Mursal, meaning the Sahabi is not in the hadith. And Kathir ibn Murrah, but Imam Ahmad narrates it. Why? So what? It, what? What's the value of Imam Ahmad narrates something? It means a reputable scholar at some point narrated. And Kathir ibn Murrah قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. So Kathir ibn Murrah, not a Sahabi, quotes the, the Prophet So it's it's a Mursal. إن الله لا يطلع ليلة النصف من شعبان فيغفر لأهل الأرض إلا رجلين مشرك أو مشاحن. All right. Imam Ahmad narrates that, that Allah uh, looks upon the earth and examines the people of the earth and he forgives everyone except for two types of people. One person who is a mushrik and the other two people who have a dispute. So make sure you have no feuds on Laylat and Nisfi Min Chaban. Tabrani Ibn Hibban. Tabrani and Ibn Hibban narrate it. Musnadan, Marfu'an, An Kathir, Marra, An Kathir Ibn Murra, and Mu'adh Ibn Jabal. Okay, binahu nafs al or or binahu lafdi. So Tabrani and Ibn Hibban, two other scholars, they connected the chain. So Imam Ahmad cited it from the from the second generation Muslim, straight quoting the Prophet. But Tabarani and Ibn Hibban, they gave the full chain. That's why sometimes, yeah, a, a, a one narr- version of a hadith may be weak because it's mursal, it's skipping the companion. But an, in another book, they have the same hadith connected fully. In this case, the Sahabi is is Mu'adh. 
Ibn Jabal. No, you say to yourself, well, why not cite that one first? Sometimes they they go by the age of the author. So Imam Ahmad comes first. He is more virtuous. He's more knowledgeable. He's more known in the Ummah. He's more accepted. So they gave Imam Ahmad's version first. Then he gave the version of Tabrani and Ibn Hibban. Daraqutni is another scholar. And he writes in his book, uh, Kitab As-Sunan. Okay. Bisanadihi an Abi Tha'lab al-Khushani radiyallahu anhu qala. With a chain from Abu Tha'lab to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inna Allah azza wa jalla yattari'u ala ibadihi. Allah examines. Okay. And Allah already knows. But this is for emphasis. When Allah says, so that Allah can know. For example, wali alam Allah in the Quran says, uh, this is so that Allah can know. As if he doesn't know. No, it's for emphasis. He already knows. La yattari'u. This is Allah examines. This is to give emphasis. So on that night, he forgives the believers and he gives time for the non-believers. But two people who hate each other, he leaves them to their own hatred of one another. Until... Uh, until they leave off this hatred, then he forgives them. Okay. Or yad'u, hatta yad'u. Okay. Until they call upon him. Next hadith. Oh no, it's yad'u, yad'u. So there's no tashkir, so sometimes you have to guess what it is. But the footnote says, a yatruku, yad'u, until they hate, they leave off this hatred of theirs. So don't have any feuds as you come upon the Laylat and Nisfim and Shaban. Here we go, Darakutni and Imam Ahmad with the full chain from Sayyidah Aisha. Faqadtu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam adhat al I couldn't find the Masjid of Allah one night. فَقَرَجْتُ فَإِذَا هُوَ فِي الْبَقِيَةِ I went out and found him at the Baqiyah, which is the graveyard in Medina. It's a very special graveyard in Medina. رَافِعًا رَأْسَهُ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ His head turned up to the heavens. فَقَالَ أَكُنْتِ تَخَافِينَ أَنْ يَحِيفَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكِ وَرَسُولِهِ يَحِيفَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكِ وَرَسُولُهِ Did you worry that the Prophet ﷺ Okay, and his messenger would 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 cheat you from your day. You think that I went to another of the wife's house? Okay. Okay. He said, I thought that you went to another wife's home. Okay. Inna Verily, Allah subhanahu wa taala descends. Okay, to the earth of this world. He comes down to this world on the night of the middle of Sha'ban and he forgives. He forgives more people than the amount of hairs on the sheep of the Bani Kalb tribe, which is, in other words, an, uh, a number that you cannot count. And what does it mean here, he says? What does it mean that he comes down to the earth of the heavens? Meaning his mercy comes down. Or his commandment comes down. Or as Imam Malik says, he sends angels down to fulfill his will. Okay. All right. Or it is a manifestation of Allah's mercy. Things of this nature. Ta'wilat of that nature. وَخَرَّجَهُ إِبْنِ مَاجَ Ibn Maja mentions it again. Look how many narrators here are saying this. وَخَرَّجَهُ إِبْنِ مَاجَ فِي سُنَنِهِ بِنَحْوِهِ Ibn Maja gives basically the same thing. Okay. في فضل ليلة النسف من شابان. And also Ibn Habban in his Sahih narrates it. The same thing. All right. At-Tirmidhi says, Da'am al-Bukhari had al-Hadith. At-Tirmidhi says, Bukhari thought it was a weak Hadith. So he's being honest. He's telling you what Bukhari thought. But Bukhari is not the only say in Hadith. There are others. وأخرج الدار قطني أيضا من حديث دار قطني also brings the same Hadith from Bakr ibn Sahad ibn Hisham ibn Urwa عن أبي عن عائشة. A famous chain, Hisham ibn Urwa, Nabi an Aisha. Hisham ibn Urwa, who's Urwa? Urwa is the son of Zubair. So what is, who is Zubair, was Zubair married to? The daughter of Abu Bakr, Asma. So what does that make Aisha to him? It makes him his aunt. So Urwa ibn Zubair used to be able to sit and, and even spend long periods of time with Sayyid Aisha without her hijab, without her veil, without the curtain. So because Sayyid Aisha used to teach men, but behind a curtain. 
So they never look at her and they never see her face. So Urwa ibn Zubair, he was her nephew. So he would go and spend long periods of time in her house. And Hisham is his son. So Hisham from Urwa, from his dad, Urwa, from Aisha, is a very famous chain. You find it all over uh, the books of Hadith and especially in what of Imam Malik. كانت ليلة النصف من شعبان ليلتي. One night, the night of the Nisf of Shaban was my night. In other words, the Prophet comes to, to my house, to my apartment, which was a small room. I couldn't find him. In the middle of the night, I couldn't find him. So she said, I reached, I couldn't find him on the mattress. And she said, by Allah, my mattress was not cotton. It was not all these special things that people have to sleep on. They said, well, what was it? She said that it was, it was made of a le leather stuffed with hair. Okay. And fibers. Then I went looking in the homes of the other women. I couldn't find it. Then I went back to my my room. Lo and behold, he is in the state of sujood. And he's saying in his sujood, my, uh, myself and my shadow prostrate to you, Allah, and my heart believes in you. He says, Oh, great one, who we have hope in you, forgive all these great sins. And then he continued, my, the, the, my face prostrates to the one who created it and fashioned it and made ears and made eyes. Then he came up. Then he went into sujood again. And he says, I seek refuge in your pleasure from your anger and from your forgiveness from your punishment and from you from you because the good and the bad both come from Allah. So I seek refuge uh, in Allah from the 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 punishment of Allah. La I can never can uh, count the blessings that you've given. And I can never praise you as you deserve to be praised. Athana is praise. I can never la I can never praise you as you deserve to be praised. I say as my brother Dawood says. All right. I put my face in the dirt for my master, right? And it is his right to be prostrated to. Then he raised his head and then he said, Allahumma razuqni qalban taqiyan. Oh Allah, grant me a pious heart. Taqiyan. La kafiran. Pure. With no kufr. Wala shaqiyan. No misery. Thumman saraf. Then he left. Notice sometimes the Prophet ﷺ would go into ruku'ah or sujood or in the silent prayer and say something out loud so that the Sahaba would learn what to say when, when we're in the silent prayer. Okay. And then he continues. Hadith continues. And then he says, um, And then he speaks about Laylat and Nisfi min Shaban. Yanziru Allahu Ta'ala ila samai dunya fayaghfiru li ibadihi illa al mushrik awa mushahin. That Allah Ta'ala descends onto the earth of this world except for a pagan and two people having an argument. So he explained to say that this is this is it wasn't his norm to such a long prayer with with desperation in it. She asked him, and then she he answered. Qala ibn al-Mubarak. Again, let's let's repeat who what, what what that narration was from. That was from the narration of Adara um, Qutni. Okay, ibn al-Mubarak. Who is Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak? He's one of the great scholars of Persia. Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak is from the great scholars of Persia. Sma'atul Awza'i. I heard Awza'i. 
he's from the generation after the 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 third generation of Awza'i, Malik, those he's from after them. He said, I heard Awza'i uh explaining that the Mushahin is everyone kullu musahib bida is everyone who has a bid'ah. He's a person of a sect. He's part of some sect. He's not uh, following the sunnah as it should be followed in terms of beliefs. Okay. That separates from the jama'ah and the ummah. So al bid'ah can be the bid'ah in beliefs. So you separated yourself from al sunnah. Okay. Uh, uh, عن الأوزاعي إمام الأوزاعي gives a narration ليس المشاحن الذي لا يكلم الرجل he says the مشاحن here is not the one who, who doesn't talk to another person إنما المشاحن الذي في قلبه شحناء rather the مشاحن is the one who has hatred in his heart لأصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم to the companions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم وروي عن عمر ابن هانئ سألت ابن ثوبان عن المشاحن so he says, who else? Someone else asked about the Mushahin. He said, li sunnati Nabi If someone who leaves off the sunnah, he's like not on the sunnah. He left the group. He's he's deviated from the ummah. Okay. So then, if there's two different interpretations of who's the Mushahin, then you should avoid both. Imam Ahmad fi musnadihi fi min hadith Ibn Lahia fi sanadihi. The famous Ibn Lahia. Imam Ahmad he cites Ibn Lahia with his sanad from Abdullah ibn Umar. With a full senate from Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Yattali Allahu tabarak wa ta'ala ila khalqihi layla ta nisfi min shaban. Allah ta'ala examines, gazes upon his creation on the night of nisf from Shaban, and he forgives to all of his servants except the mushahin and the killer, the one who has two people in a feud, or in this case, the other interpretation, the innovator, and the one who kills. Okay, the murderer. Now we go from, those are the virtues of it. Now we go to Laylat Ijab, Ijabat Dua. We'll do this section and we'll stop here for today. But this is the most important, and this is the most beautiful section. The Ijabat Dua. That it is a night where Dua is answered. وَعَنْ أَبِي الدَّرْدَى رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قَالَ from Abu Darda, the companion that the Prophet Sallallahu said, Laylat al-Nisfi min Sha'ban yahbitu al-Rahman The merciful comes down. And as we interpreted that, as Malik said, it means that the merciful sends down his command or that he sends down his mercy or that he sends down an angel to fulfill his will. Okay? And he says here, Then he, look, he gazes upon the deeds of the servants. He, he forgives those who seek forgiveness. He seeks, he for, uh, relents on those seeking and he answers those who are asking. And he fulfills and he suffices the needs of those who simply rely upon him. And he leaves off people with anger in their hearts towards another. He does not do any of this with them. And he forgives all sins for whoever he wills, illa li mushrik, except a pagan, al qatil nafs, or a murderer. All right. So this is a major hadith, a beautiful hadith. Another one's coming. Women hadith Abdul Rahman ibn Salam, bi sanadihi an Uthman ibn Abil As, radiallahu ta'ala anhu qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger peace be upon him said. إذا كان ليلة النصف من شعبان if it is the ليلة of نصف of شعبان وذهب ثلث الليل and a third of the night is gone so now there's two thirds left okay ينزل الله تبارك وتعالى إلى سماء الدنيا then Allah comes to the sky of this world فيقول هل من داع فأجيبه is there someone asking so that I can answer him هل من مستغفر فأغفر له فأغفر له is there someone seeking forgiveness so I can forgive him هل من تائم فأتوب عليه is there someone seeking repentance so I can relent unto him? He forgives to the believers except Zania Taksibu Bifarjiha, a prostitute. She earns money through her private parts. Asharan. Okay. Someone who takes taxes without a reason. Takes a ushr or a tax without just cause. Or people who have a feud. They're not forgiven, and none of this 
benefit comes to them. وَرَوَى مُحَمَّدِ بِنْ عِيْسَى بِنْ حِبَّانِ بِسَنَدِهِ أَنَّ أَبَى سَعِيدِ الْخُدْرِ رضي الله عنه, the great Sahabi, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, he says, دَخَلَ عَلَى عَائِشَ رضي الله عنها فَقَالَتْ عَائِشَ He entered upon Aisha. So Aisha said, يَا أَبَى سَعِيد So the Sahabi entered upon Sayyid Aisha. Of course, Sayyid Aisha, she used to receive Sahaba, but with a curtain. Okay. And he said to her, يَا uh, أَبَى uh, She said to him, she, she, she began the speech to him, say, Oh, Abu Sa'id, tell me what you heard from the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay. All right. Then I will tell you with, with what I saw. So let's trade hadith. You tell me what you, you heard from the Prophet, peace be upon him, in public. And then I will tell you what I saw him doing here. In other words, you teach me something, I'll teach you something. Abu Sa'id said, Can Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the Messenger, peace be upon him, said, Used to إذا خرج إلى صلاة الصبح قال اللهم مملأ سمعي نورا. If the Prophet ﷺ used to leave for the Fajr prayer, which we call Subh, he said, "Oh, fill my ears with nur, wa basari nura, and my eyesight with nur, wa min bayni adaya nura, and between my hands nur, and behind me wa khalfi nura, and on my right light, and on my left light, and from above me light, and below me light, and wa and and wa aadhim nur bi rahmatik and." Enhance this light with your mercy. Okay. Meaning the light of Islam and guidance. Okay. Mm. All right. Laylatul Itqi min an nar. And then the the next part. So we're almost halfway through, but we'll stop here. The rest of it, the next had next section is on salvation from the hellfire. Al Itqi min an nar. And how many people are saved. So that basically takes us to half the book. If you're on Instagram, half of this lex, less uh, this this stream, the mic wasn't plugged in, so you have to go back and um, and listen to it, and or you can go listen to it at YouTube, actually. So let's now go to the Q and A. Ryan, what do you got for us? Uh, only on this topic. Q and A is only on anything related to this topic. All right, go ahead. What are some activities that a husband and wife can do to take advantage of Shaban and Ramadan? When you when when it's the latest in this in Shaban, one of the best things is to go over these 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 promises, because a a good thing you can only take care of it the more you visualize and remember in your mind the promises that go with it. So that's the first thing. The second thing it is it's a night of salah and ibadah. In the same, in the sense that the ibadah itself is no different. How, whatever you would do in the last third of the night for tahajjud or for qiyam, you would do it here. So the best thing I would say is to do some something in the early part of the night after Isha, but then to get up for tahajjud and do your ibadah, recite Quran, uh, pray with an extra long salah, and then make a lot of dua. All right, let's take this question from Isra. If a Muslim is wronged by her older brother who disrespects her and tries to intimidate her in the presence of her family, yet the father pressures her to give him the benefit of the doubt and to forgive him. But she can't bring herself to because she feels that he oppressed her. Is she a mushahina? No, of course not. 100% she's not a mushahid. Here's another question from... Uh, I think this is Sahar Azamat. So she says, you said the book is given to the angel on the night of Qadr, but later you said they are there are not many deaths after Maghrib uh, because the angel is busy getting the book with all finalized matter. So that narration said that, it said that uh, the one would not find much death occurring between Maghrib and Aisha on Laylat and Nisfi min Shaban because that is the night in which the angel receives the book of who is to live and who is to die. Basically, that's his assignment for the rest of the year. He receives his assignment for the rest of the year on that night. And in another narration, that it's not the deaths that are is they're given the will of Allah comes down, but then every angel is given their assignment of what to do for the believers on Laylat al-Qadr. That's, that was a different narration. Uh, what are the mustahab asked to do latest in this room in Shaban? Says M. Chima. The mustahab is any any basic ibadah that the, the ibadat themselves are no different, but there should be a lot of istighfar and ibadah and dua in general. Uh, what's the name of the book that you're reading? The name of the book uh, precisely is Risalat al Kashfi wal Bayan an Fadail Laylat and Nisfi min Shaban. The treatise of 
clarifying, uh, or exposing, or I should exposing usually has a bad connotation, but revealing and clarifying the virtues of the uh, night of the middle of Shaban. Remember, it is March 17th tonight. This is the first part. We're going to discuss this again. I think that we should just we should discuss this again next week so that you've heard it two different weeks, right? Next Tuesday, we'll discuss this again because um, that will be next week. Next Tuesday will take us to the 15th. So we'll have talked about it two days before the, the night itself again. So we'll, uh, we talked about half of it this Tuesday. Next Tuesday, we cover the rest of the book. All right, Ryan, what you got? Are, are there any scholarly references regarding praying Salatul Tasabih on Laylatul Nisfu Min Shabbat? Uh, the, the, as we said here, the dua, the ibad, it's more val it, it has a great value on Laylatul Nisfu Min Shabbat. Uh, and tesib, Salat al-Tasabih can be done uh, anytime. So as we said, the, the, worst, the ibadat themselves are the same, no different. But there is a value in the acceptance of dua at this night. Safat says, what's the difference between this for Shaban and Laylatul Qadr? Laylatul Qadr is greater. But it's, it's there, uh, as he said, uh, the night of Friday is one level uh, uh, of, of blessing every Laylatul Jum'ah. Well, firstly, every every night of Tahajjud is one level. Then Laylatul to Jum'ah is above that. Then Laylatul to Nisfi, then uh, the first of Rajab, then Laylatul to Nisfi Shaban, then Laylatul Qadr. In all of them, there is Ijabat al-Da'wah, but with different levels of power and strength. So let me repeat them again. Every night, and tahajjud, the last third of every night. Then Laylat al-Jum'ah, which is what we call Thursday night, is a cut above that. Then the first night of Rajab is a cut above that. Then the uh, middle of Sha'ban is a cut above that. Then Laylat al-Qadr is the greatest, and Laylat al-Qadr is hidden. You, you never know when is Laylat al-Qadr. Of course, there are signs, but you still never know. Uh, someone wants me to repeat the name of the book. The name of the book is Risalat Al-Kashfi Wal-Bayan and Laylat Al-Nisfi Min Shaban. You can get the PDF. You could just get the PDF somewhere. Okay. Risalat Al-Kashfi Wal-Bayan and Fadail Laylat Al-Nisfi Min Shaban. Abdul Basit Khan said, some people said, Sahaba didn't do Ibadah on Nusya Shaban, then why should we? It's Bidah. Uh, well, the Sunnah is defined by the Messenger, isn't it? Right? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has defined it and he's given all these virtues and the sahaba firstly who told you that is wrong right whoever told you the sahaba didn't do so that's incorrect in the first place so uh the sahaba clearly narrated this so why would they narrate it if it had no value why would ibn abbas have a special dua there's a special dua from ibn abbas uh, sorry ibn mas'ud himself on this so why would they narrate all this and then they didn't do anything so he had a special dua uh, in a book, guys, you want to be comfortable? You can sit here. Yeah. All right, Shali, uh, Jalili says, in a book by Al-Iskandari, he mentions an etiquette of du'a by asking Allah what's best for you as opposed to what we desire. Is it mandatory to make du'a in this way? Not necessarily. A person should, should, should say that uh, you can put something that if it's good for me. Okay, You can say, this is what I asked for if it's good for me. Right, but you should have jazm in your dua and not be shaky in your dawat, and you should simply say if it's good for me. All right, the best source of dream interpretation has to be a person. It's got to be a, a scholar who knows this science. Ryan, you're up. Uh, Maliki Click asks, "I can never think of a time that I've received one singular test. Yeah. Instead, Allah sends to me many heavy tests all at once, and it overwhelms me at times. What can I do?" So uh, someone saying that I receive many tests all at once, okay, rather than um, tests here and a test there. So when it rains, it pours, right? So there is a, a value to that. There is some who say that it is better for the abd to have all of his tests come at once and then have a long period of peace and prosperity so that all of a person's trials come at once and then he has a nice long period of peace and prosperity. Uh, and then for blessings, it's the opposite. To have your blessings spread out so that every day there's something to look forward to. So you have a very small blessing at home, a very small blessing at work, right? Your car is a pretty decent blessing. Everything else is a decent blessing, right? So that at every hour, from, from every stage of life, from every phase, 
you're actually going from one blessing to the next, right? As opposed to all your blessings, you got it in one year and then you're back to misery. Now, for bad, uh, for, for bad things happening, the opposite is better. All of them get rid of them at once. Why? There's an ayah in the Quran in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says um, uh, uh, about the calamity of al-Uhud, okay? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy for them with the expression ghamman bi ghamm that he lightens one hardship with another hardship. So when you have one bad thing happens, it sticks out like a nail in your foot. But if you have a lot of bad things happen, okay, all at once, it almost, they wash each other out. So there's value in all your calamities coming. I mean, we don't want calamities at all. But if, it, if it's going to happen that way, let it all be at once. At that point, you just laugh, right? Like things got so bad that you can't even remember and you just give up to Allah Ta'ala. So that's, this is one of the things that they say about calamities when they come versus blessings when they come. Blessings are best to be spread out and calamities are best to come just all at once. Okay. You get fired, you get divorced, you lose your car, you get jumped all in, in one six months period. Get it all out of the way. Then when it's over and the sun comes out again, then you could be happy and, and you could know that, alhamdulillah, we got all that stuff out of the way. So if you get purified, all your sins are knocked out. You learn a couple lessons about life. Uh, can you do a session about intuition and basira? Inshallah, why not? We could. All right, Abdul Basit Khan. We answered Shiraz Ahmed's question already. Abdul Basit Khan, in the statement, is the statement Mamadi correct that the Ummah cannot guard the honor of the Prophet, then it should die? Allah Adam, I never saw that statement, but we can see. Inshallah, we could look at it. Notions in the in in Imam Sayyid Muhammad Ali Maliki's book, notions that must be corrected. Why was he defensive of Abdul Wahab? I was surprised to read this stance. Uh, I have not been able to find a proper explanation. So he was living in Saudi at that time. If he had uttered a word on Sayyid Muhammad ibn, uh, on, on on Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, then nobody would have respected what he wrote. So he gave the most, or they probably would have killed him. They tried to kill him anyway. They actually tried to execute him. They at first had him fired from his position as head of theology in, in, in the Umm al Qura. Then they had him put under house arrest. Then they wanted him executed publicly for his positions, for heresy. These are the Wahhabis. So if they want you executed for heresy, chances are you're on the good side, right? So then the king sat with him and King Fahd at the time and they came to an agreement and said, how about you, you know, you live, we, we, we'll, we'll remove this execution request, but we will, you just stay in your home. No public speak. So we just stayed in his home and he had, it was a huge home. He had a whole block. Okay. He had a whole block and then it was filled with students. And the first half of the house was a masjid. There was a big iron gate. The first half of it, was like a pub, was a, a mosque that was semi-public. So people want to visit him from Maghrib to Aisha, they could come and they can hang out, they can pray. Salat uh, Maghrib and Aisha is prayed there. Then after that was an even bigger hall for the big events that he would do for the students. And there they would have dinners there. They would put the they would put sheets out and they would have the food there. And then uh, and then in a uh, in that first in the first hall he had a, like a throne. He had a chair that he would sit on. Right, because he was very old at that time, and he was very unhealthy, and he was huge. He was maybe six foot five, and he was built. He was very heavy, right? But he was very tall too. So he would sit on that because he couldn't sit on the floor anymore. He reached a point he can't sit on the floor, and then he uh, would receive guests. Then he had a big hall. Then after that, there were he had his living quarters in one area, and had all the little classrooms and the dormitories for the students. Most of the students were Indonesians. A lot of Indonesians. When I was like all Indonesians. Okay? So he had to, to give Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab the most generous possible um, excuse. And the what the one thing that I remember that he said, and it's probably what you're talking about, is how he, he goes on at length at how Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab must have loved the Prophet, peace be upon him, because he wrote a book of the biography of the Prophet, peace be upon him. So he's trying to give him the most Husnadhan type of excuse so that the the Wahhabis themselves, when they read the book, of course they're going to read the book and try to criticize everything about him. 
uh, at least they would see that part. Okay, so that's the reason why he did give a little bit of a generous reading of Muhammad ibn Abdul Rahab in that book. If an environment is influencing you, says Bengal, negatively, are you required to leave the environment? You should leave the environment if it's influencing you negatively. Fatima bin Abdul Rauf says, is it true you shouldn't cry when reciting the Quran? Who said this? No. There's no, there's nothing that says that. Bengal says, should you leave that environment or try to be stronger? No, you shouldn't challenge yourself in Iman. You should go where you have support. Right? If you're if you're uh fasting, do you then go to Whole Foods and go to the chicken aisle and smell the chicken and stuff? If you're a guy who's single, do you uh, walking on Easton Ave and 10 at night in the summertime when there's right you think people need clothes <laughs> right it's like wait you pulled you paid full price for that dress you only got like a shirt my undershirt's longer than that dress right that's literally what you're seeing do you do that and challenge yourself and create fitness for yourself no you leave that situation if you're forced to be somewhere that's the sign that Allah Ta'ala wants you to learn if you're forced to be somewhere not if you go there by yourself Safa says, I heard reading Surah Yasin 41 times to get dua accepted. Is it a bid'ah? Allahu Adam. I never, I, I, there's a lot of things like that that go around. These are just things that maybe one wali, one righteous person, he had a good experience with that. So maybe it's for him, maybe it works for you, maybe it doesn't. Is the Sunnah to go at a graveyard the night of Nisr Sha'ban? We would say it's the Sunnah Khafifa since the Prophet did it once. If the Prophet did it once, it's like Sunnah. If he did it all the time and he gave it a name, it'd be Sunnah Mu'akkadah. If he gave the practice a name, we would call it Sunnah Mu'akkadah. If he did it all the time. All right, next, uh, Ryan. Uh, there was a good one. I was gonna, oh, um, is there anything that the Habayib recommend doing here? Yeah, they they recommend, um, they have a like a type of PDF, I guess you can get uh, for dua and dhikr that a person can do. And amongst that is the dua of Abdullah bin Mas'ud. All right. So we can get that. Um, when Prophet Yusuf saw the dream of stars prostrating to him, what does that actually mean? Does it mean the stars were coming closer to him? How can a star prostrate? It was the meaning of it. He, he it's Sometimes you can see a dream, but you don't know how it happened. But the meaning of the stars and the sun and the moon prostrating to him was was came into his mind. The meaning came into his mind. Right, so that's how because stars have obviously they're round. So how does a round thing prostrate? So uh, the meaning came into his heart of that. Safa says, if one is unable to stand, should they pray sitting on the floor? And how? Yes, in in uh, nafila, any sunnah prayer, any nafila, you can do it sitting on the ground, with the reason or without a reason, but you get half the reward. Ryan, how do you do it? You just sit on your knees. And then you bend your head a little bit for Rukua, and then you go all the way down for sujood. That's it. Some quote a hadith that men's trousers hanging below their ankle, will, these people will not be forgiven on the night of Nis Jaban. And they say it's out of arrogance. Is that true? Um, first of all, it's the hadith is about this question is if your pants pass your ankles, will you be forgiven on the night of Shaban? Some people say that. There is a hadith that says you'll never be forgiven. Um, the answer to that, first of all, is that the Prophet, yes, he did say that he forbade the prolonging of the thob. The thob. The thob is different from the pants. The thob is, is a garment that in the ancient times, and if you watch all the Greco-Roman movies, they all drag their thobes, right? Because that was a thing in the old world, that people drag their thobes. And go look at any Roman movie, like a, a historical type of movie, they're all dragging their robe. So in that case, that's what the prophet was talking about, the people who behave like that. It was a thing of the arrogant back in the old days. So it says the thobe. It doesn't say the pants. right? So today, everyone's pants go a little bit past the ankle, but it's not out of arrogance, and that's permissible. What's the proof that it's permissible? Sayyidina Abu Bakr, his izar used to always fall down because he was thin. And he says, oh, Messenger of Allah, my izar, because I'm thin, my izar always falls down. He said, the Prophet said, you don't do it out of arrogance. So the Prophet gave the uh, the condition here, is that if it's done out of arrogance. That's the condition here. Um, 
When was the ayah of Inna Allah Malaikata Usulun Ala Nabi? When was it revealed? Allah Alam. We have to check. All right, Ryan, what else you got? We'll take let's take two more and then we wrap up for the day. What dua can someone make for deceased parents? What can you do? Can you make for a deceased parents? Allah Allah uh, uh, forgive them and has mercy upon them. Any uh, any type of dua. But the fastest is Allah Allahum. Do we say iqama for nawafil? The answer is no. You don't say the iqama for any sunnas or nawafil. All right, well, let's take one more, Ryan. What you got? Why is there so much debate on this topic? Why is there so much debate on this topic? Because Iblis doesn't want people to benefit. So he goes to the people who like to call everything a bid'ah. And he says, call this a bid'ah. And they call it a bid'ah. But as you can see here, there's way, well, way enough of a... Uh, a well of um, what's the expression? I got my tongue, self tongue tied on the expression uh, of of evidences. What is it? Oh, there's like a there's a, enough knowledge here, tons of knowledge here. Okay, showing us this is completely not just valid. It's excellent. Okay, it's excellent. So this uh, this act to do is an excellent thing to take advantage of Laylat and Nisfim and Chaban. Which country is best to go to for Islamic studies outside of America? I think uh, there's a lot of great Turkish uh, Syrian scholars in Turkey Turkey now, okay, but um, it's hard to get into Turkey. They 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 don't really allow people uh, nowadays. They they don't want the students of knowledge there. Not the federal government, but the state of Istanbul. I don't know somehow. To, to go into the state of Istanbul, the governor himself has rights of who could stay and who can't. It's not like our country where it's the federal government. So they actually kick out a lot of students of knowledge. But Turkey is one of the best places to go to because of the Syrian scholars that are there. Pakistan has a lot of uh, great colleges and schools too. No doubt about it. All right. All right. Jazakum Allah khairan, everyone. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruk wa natubu ilayk. Wal asr inna al-insana la fi khusr. Illa al-ladhina amanu wa aminu al-salihat. Wa tawasaw bil-haq. Wa tawasaw bil-sabr. Jazakum Allah khairan. Wassalamu alaykum wa